Decisions, decisions. Will I have tea or coffee this morning? Choose a nice healthy bowl of porridge or that delicious mouth-watering bacon sandwich? Sorry, where was I? Oh yes, decisions. Ah, oh, here's a new choice that suddenly appeared. Feed dog or walk dog? Hmm, he does look hungry. I think I'll feed him. You feed the dog to the dragon lurking outside? What? No, that's not what I meant. No, undo, undo. When it comes to decisions in video games, developers tend to give the players as much information as possible up front so that they can at least predict the immediate outcomes of their choice. The long-term effects may be unforeseeable, but the short-term, they should be pretty obvious, right? Well, not with the following games. These are the times developers either straight up trolled their players or, for one reason or another, neglected to give them a crucial piece of information before a big decision. And the results? Well, they are down right disastrous. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump and here are 10 video game decisions with disastrous unintended consequences. Number 10. Fantasize about chopping off a hand. Baldur's Gate 3. We may as well start with the inspiration for this video. Baldur's Gate 3 is a masterpiece, with a beautiful world, deep characters, and more choices than you can shake a dungeon master at. Some of those decisions, though, don't play out the way the player intended. Kick the squirrel, anyone? But it is going down the path of the Dark Urge, where things truly start flying off the rails. The Dark Urge is a special origin character, and while players can customise their appearance, they can't do much regarding their tendency towards violence. Violence, something poor James discovered firsthand. Near the start of the game, players will stumble upon a peculiar scene of an arm magically sticking out of a rock. This is Gale, and he needs the player's help in pulling him out. Here, they are offered a number of choices, ranging from asking Gale what happened, to attempting to pull him free, to leaving him to his fate. The Dark Urge, however, has an extra option. Fantasize about chopping off a hand. Sounds like an atrocious daydream, doesn't it? Nothing more. Well, the Dark Urge acts out their dreams, it seems. Pick this option, and after some screaming, you'll open your eyes to find Gale gone with nothing but a bloody hand left waiting for you. <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, Gale. Number 9. Send Trigvi to Parley, the Banner Saga 2. Survival in Viking times was not a guarantee. Food was scarce, medicine was almost non-existent, and if you weren't slain in battle, the freezing weather would probably finish you off instead. Now imagine all of that, but in a world where the sun hangs frozen in the sky, enormous stone golems wreak havoc, and you are placed in charge of a struggling caravan of survivors, stragglers, and scoundrels. And you thought your job was stressful? The Banner Saga series sees players take on the leading role in a beautiful but brutal interactive story story, fight in challenging isometric battles, and make key choices which could lead to anything from more supplies to the death of a loved one. Good thing you have friends like Trigvi to rely on. Partway through the second game, players will enter the lands of the Cragsmen, a bitter clan of blood-soaked warriors who hate outsiders. Lucky for you, Trigvi was once their kin, so when they notice a group of Cragsmen following them, they're given the opportunity to send Trigvi out to parlay with them. Players might jump at this opportunity, but those hoping for a peaceful chat will be severely disappointed, as the moment your friend reaches them, they murder him in cold blood. Yikes. Number 8. Any doubt or accuse. L.A. Noir. There are mood swings, and then there's Cole Phelps, hard-boiled detective, former military man, and absolute nutcase. While Eleanor Noir's detailed semi-open world and engaging crime scene investigations are great fun to get lost in, the game's real draw is its hyper-realistic motion scan technology, which captures every last facial expression of an actor's performance, from a twitching eyebrow to a quivering lip. While the graphical fidelity of the time wasn't quite up to scratch, when translating the detail captured by the motion scan into gameplay, the results are still impressive, and really let players tap into their inner Poirot and gauge whether or not a suspect is lying based on subtle clues. The only problem comes when having decided a suspect was indeed fibbing, players choose to doubt or accuse them. Picking one of these would see Cole immediately fly off the handle, disregarding all pretense of being a professional detective 
perspective and unleashing a furious diatribe of swears and insults on some poor defenceless housewife or bartender. There's a difference between doubting someone's story and verbally abusing them, Cole. Later versions of the game renamed the prompts Good Cop, Bad Cop and Accuse, but a more accurate version would have been Good Cop, Insane Cop. Number 7. Give Thops an Academy Key Elden Ring from software just love messing with players' expectations. Want to change your fate? Well, now the world's on fire. Hoping to help that NPC? Guess what? You just killed them. It might be the first, but it won't be the last Soulsborne game mentioned today. Elden Ring is the pinnacle of the Soulsborne formula. Every sneaky trap, every towering boss, and every piece of esoteric lore you know and love, only now in a huge open world. It took everything players enjoyed from the previous games and turned them up to 11. And as a result, players will inadvertently ruin the lives of almost every NPC they come across. Take Thops, for example, one of the few friendly smiling faces players can meet in the lands between. All Thops wants to do is learn a little magic. For a small donation, he'll even offer to teach the player what he's learned already. But as scholar at heart, his true goal is to get back inside the academy walls and hit the books. Players can aid him on his quest by giving him the academy key, but do so, and they will later find him dead at his desk for no discernible reason. This might be the first case of schoolwork literally killing someone. Number 6. Send anyone to Yosefka. Bloodborne another Soulsborne game to scratch off your bingo card. The world of Bloodborne is a truly depressing one. Once human beasts scour the streets, the clergy have turned into monsters, and Lovecraftian gods send people mad from outside the realms of perception. As such, players may wish to make Yharnam a better place. And where better to start than with directing its frightened civilians to safety? While slaughtering beasties in the city's dingy side streets, players may find houses with their lights on. Knocking on the doors, usually results in the occupants spouting insults, but sometimes they'll be friendly and will ask if you know anywhere safe to wait out the night. Players are given a choice here. Send them to the creepy and exposed Erden Chapel or Yosefka's clinic where they first woke up. First timers will likely choose the clinic, as it's out of the way and the kindly Yosefka has promised to treat any who enter her door. All except you. You're not welcome for some reason. Sneak in through the back and you'll see why. This Yosefka is an imposter. She turned the original into a wobbly blue alien and has done the same to any NPC sent her way. Erden Chapel is looking decidedly less creepy now, hey. Number 5. Sparing Raish Batman Arkham Knight Batman doesn't kill. Other than cosplaying as a giant bat, it's literally his whole deal. While he may bend this rule occasionally, like beating a man into a coma and leaving him in the streets, which might not technically kill him, but the cold certainly will, but he never breaks his rule. Which is why this next choice may come as a surprise to fans. The finale to the Arkham trilogy, Arkham Knight, is the ultimate Batman game. Unless you're on PC. Seriously, what is up with those bad PC ports? But while it's story had its ups and downs, this didn't stop fans from wanting more, and Rocksteady delivered, with the season of infamy. In this expansion, Batman faces off against the likes of Killer Croc, Mad Hatter, and Raish al Ghul. But old Raish has been through a lot, and when players find him, it's clear his Lazarus fluid is the only thing keeping him alive. And it's running out. Players are then faced with a choice, find more fluid or let Raish die. You might think that Batman would choose to save a life, no matter the consequences consequences and pick option 1. Do so however and Raish's won't be happy. He'll go mad and kill his daughter, a surprisingly honourable woman, calling her a traitor. Maybe it's time to rethink that rule, eh bats? Number 4. Freela Trek – Dark Souls and here it is, today's final Soulsborne game. From Software really are the masters of making their players look like fools, aren't they? Between the hideous monstrosities, hollowed soldiers and literal ghosts, a surprising number of inexplicably jolly NPCs call Lordran home. Some are overtly friendly, such as the ever-lovable Solaire, while others are overtly unfriendly looking, such as Oswald of Karim. But at least they all love to laugh, as most of the characters the player 
player is likely to meet either find themselves in peculiar situations or appear evil at first glance, it's almost as if players are being conditioned to ignore their gut, trust everyone, and deal with the repercussions later. As such, they can be forgiven for falling into a few traps. One such trap is Knight Lautrec, found languishing in a prison cell in the undead parish. He asks you to free him and laughs maniacally, and as everyone seems to do that in Dark Souls, you do as he asks. It may seem like a good idea at first. He gives the player a sunlight medal that can be summoned to help against a couple of bosses, but then, out of the blue, he goes and murders the firekeeper, thus preventing the player from levelling up until they track him down and kill him. Should have left him laughing in that cage, huh? Number 3. Tell Rex to Calm Down – Mass Effect the Mass Effect series is built on difficult decisions. Should I side with the Quarians or the Geth? Should I kill or spare the Ratchney Queen? And which one of these dialogue options lets me flirt with that blue alien? While the choices themselves may be difficult, at least players can always predict what the outcome may be. Almost always, that is. The first game sees Commander Shepard, first human spectre and endorser of every shop on the Citadel, on their search for the truth about the mysterious Reapers. This search leads them to the planet Vermeer, where rogue spectra Sauron is attempting to cure the Genophage, a virus made to prevent the warlike Krogans from overbreeding, and create an army of angry Krogan warriors. Naturally, Shepard puts an end to that post-haste. But there's a wrinkle. Rex, your friend and ally, is a Krogan, and he wants the Genophage cured. Choose a Paragon or Renegade option, and you can convince Rex to stand down no problem. Choose the Calm Down option, however, maybe to stall for time or find another solution, and Ashley decides you're taking too long and shoots Rex in the back, killing him instantly. Jeez, Ashley, no wonder no one likes you. Number 2. Don't Trust Connor – Detroit Become Human Ah, David Cage. The man wouldn't know subtlety if it walked right up and gently nudged him on the arm, or whacked him around the head with a briefcase. Nevertheless, Detroit Become Human has its charms, and is a great choose-your-own-adventure style game to get invested in and lose a few hours to, in which your choices can radically change the narrative. Set in, you guessed it, Detroit in the year 2038, Become Human follows the interconnecting tales of three androids, police investigator Connor, housekeeper Kara, and caretaker Marcus. The world presented is a bleak one, and each character can suffer or even die at the hands of the player if they mess up a quick time event or make the wrong decision, or are just really, really vindictive. Of the three, Connor seems to suffer the brunt of the mistreatment. Towards the end of the game, Marcus has become something of a freedom fighter for the androids, and Connor has tracked him down for a talk before the big final battle. Playing as Marcus, the player is given a choice – trust or don't trust Connor. You'd think the don't trust option would lead to Marcus telling him to jog on, or simply walking away himself, not shoot Connor straight in the face. Talk about overkill. And number one, shove Dijkstra aside forcefully, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. There are plenty of harrowing decisions in The Witcher 3 that will keep players up at night, many with unforeseen consequences that will come back to bite them only much later on. Most of these, at least, give the player a little time to deliberate, others only a split second to act on gut instinct, but almost all clearly spell out what the immediate consequences might be, so long as you've been paying attention. Enter Shove Dijkstra aside forcefully. When you've just risked your neck to rescue a witch, and a man blocks your escape demanding you hand her over to pay for some trumped up crimes, what do you do? Do you stop what you're doing and try to calmly talk him down, or push him aside and keep running? Naturally, many players, blood still pumping from their previous fight, chose to shove Dijkstra aside, assuming Geralt would knock him over at worst. Instead, Geralt breaks his leg forcefully. This has ramifications that ripple out and ruin any chance of getting the best possible ending. With Dijkstra now out of action, players who set in motion the plan to assassinate the awful King Radovid will see their plan crumble. Radovid will live, and thousands of innocent civilians and witches will die. Seriously, Geralt? Show a little restraint next time, yeah? 